Will you consider this? He's truly been a man about town with television jobs, and his version of AI isn't at all what we have come to know these days, you know, what its definition is anyway, but you'll soon find out. He's worked all crazy TV schedule hours, but landing at WTVP has, after a quarter of a century, found a regular schedule and a new gig, and he's a familiar face, Mr. Mark Welp. Good to see you. You too. Glad we're finally sharing a desk. How about it? I know. Back in the day, you were the competition. Well, yeah. not exactly. I mean, you were you had a crazy, crazy morning schedule. Yeah, I started in 2006 at what was formerly HOI 19. Right. And uh, did the morning show there for 11 years. With mostly Gretchen with Wirtz. Gretchen. Yeah, yeah, all with Gretchen. Okay. My first TV wife. Okay. And then went over to uh, WMBD to do the morning show and eventually uh, hooked up with Shelby Roberts. Had a good run there and then switched to Knights. Worked with uh, Kimberly Parker for a while, and then Shelby again, and now I'm here. Wow. Well, that's nice that you landed someplace, and you have, like, regular hours. I mean, basically 9 to 5. Yeah, it's amazing. How about it? So what does your wife and daughter think about that? They get to see you. Yeah, they. Uh, <laughs> we get to eat meals together. I get to go to all my daughter's events, so it's really nice. I I'm, I'm spoiled now. Okay. So the thing is that, you know, you have been working all those crazy hours living in normal that yes. whole time. You were doing the commute for all those years. Yeah, still am. Uh, I've been doing it, I guess, probably 14 years now. My first few years here, I lived in the area, but then uh, I met my wife who lived in normal, so I scooted over that way, and now the commute's a blessing. I mean, it's, uh, it's my alone time. <laughs> Do you get to the point, though, when you're driving, it's like, oh, I passed that already? I, I mean, have you been in the zone? I, I'm i good. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I know every inch of 74, and I'm, I'm just blessed right now that there's no construction. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, and that's... Very happy about that. Very unusual, yes. So, so tell me a little bit about yourself. I just found out. I didn't know where you had grown up, but Kirkwood, Missouri. The mean streets of Kirkwood. All right. Yeah, grew up there and uh, enjoyed it quite a bit. And then I went off to school in Chicago, Columbia College. And since then, I've kind of bounced around the Midwest from TV station to TV station. Worked in Columbia, Missouri, St. Louis, Champaign for a few years. It's funny, the people in Champaign... Uh, I'll run into people that say, I remember you back way back when, and that was 20 years ago now. Way back when. <laughs> yeah, way back when. <laughs> Good so, for you. Yeah, I've enjoyed I love. I'm a Midwest guy, so uh, this is the only place I've ever wanted to live, so I'm happy. That's awesome. Um, so, But you've done news, 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 mm -hmm. except for Mark's Furry Friends. Right. And that started just as a, a weekly feature on HOI, right? Yeah, I started there. They had been doing kind of a pet of the week type thing and they would just take a, a picture of an animal from Tap Snow Kill Animal Shelter in Pekin and I thought, oh, we could do more than just a picture. So, and I was living in Pekin at the time, so I decided, oh, let's give them some more publicity. So I started doing uh, three animals a week. Uh, a lot of fun, just go and hang out with the animals, don't have to do any of the hard work that the people at Taps do. Mm -hmm. And it has just uh, snowballed since then. I've been blessed to do it at every station I've been at, including here, mm -hmm. and we've gotten 3,800 animals adopted. Really? That have been on the show, yeah. So that's... that's. How many did you yourself adopt? Uh, I've gotten one, five from there. Okay. We got a dog, and then she passed, and then we got two dogs and two cats. So right now we have four animals from TAPS. Okay. So I put my money where my mouth is. Well, there you go. You know, you're <laughs> a living example. And then, um, uh, so you didn't have any allergies to any of those animals, I my, guess? No, my wife does. Okay. She's allergic to cats, but she doesn't care. Uh, she takes it. I mean, she's a cat person. I'm a dog person. But okay. uh, we all coexist. Well, it's not, it, it, and you have to in today's world, that's for sure. Um, okay, so you, you started here doing Mark's Furry Friends. Well, so the big thing is uh, now you're going into AI, and it's not artificial intelligence. This is real intelligence, right? I do my best. <laughs> We are talking at issue. Now, you know, H did it for 35 years. How can you fill, fill that slot? 
Well, I'm definitely not trying to fill his shoes. I've got my own size 14s I'm going to bring into the show. Okay, and, uh, big difference. Yes, and so we're we're trying to uh, amp it up as far as uh, the look of it. We're going to have a lot more video, pictures, graphics. We are a visual medium, so we want people to be able to see what we're talking about. And it's been a challenge so far. You know, it's it's a brand new show for me, and uh, we've got different people working on it, doing different jobs. So we're all still trying to collaborate, figure out how each other work. Mm -hmm. But I think it's going to be very interesting. The debut episode is uh, just in a few days here. Thursday at 8 o'clock, and we're doing a big show on the new OSF Cancer Institute. Which is pretty amazing in itself. Oh my gosh, the place, well, it's physically humongous. Yeah. $250 million project. Right. And it sounds like it's going to be a game changer, not only as far as uh, treating people here locally, but the people running the show think that it could soon become a national destination for other people mm -hmm. coming into town to get treatment. Well, the big thing is the proton beam. Yeah. And so a lot of people don't know what the proton beam is. Do you want to tell them or do you want me to? Or we can both tell them. Well, basically the proton beam, it's a huge machine. If you remember last October, they brought this machine in. I think it was built in Germany. Uh, it sailed to Baltimore and then- they, In pieces. In pieces, humongous machine. Uh, they had to close down traffic at different spots just to get it through. But it basically is therapy that can be isolated specifically on those cancer cells you want to get rid of, and there's less chance of doing damage to the healthy cells. Right. That's so in a nutshell. If you have a tumor way inside, mm -hmm. and they want to irradiate it or, or whatever, it it knows specifically to go to that tumor. Right. And and so without much damage to everything else. So I mean, it really is quite a blessing. Quite so good for you. That'll be a fun one. Yeah. And you're getting a new set and everything. Yeah, we got slapped a couple coats of paint on some uh, flats, and uh, it's it's been fun. You know, taking what's old and making a little bit new. And uh, yeah, we're just really excited uh, to get this show underway. And one of the things that is a challenge for me is with TV news, as you know, you go into your shift at two thirty get off at 10.30, next day you're pretty much wiping the slate clean and starting over. Right. But now I have to come up with a new show every week and schedule interviews and get the graphics Right, and it's not just news. It, I mean, news happens on that day. Right. And then this is, you're anticipating some things or, or kind of doing a wraparound of some things. Yeah, we've got uh, our first couple episodes already scheduled uh, after the Cancer Institute. We're going to be talking about the CO2 pipeline, mm -hmm. very controversial issue there. Yeah. And then, uh, have you you've done that interview already? Uh, getting ready to actually later today. Okay. But I've uh, uh, been researching it a lot and learning about uh, carbon dioxide and all that fun stuff. But mm -hmm. uh, people are really interested in this topic because it, uh, it's going to be running the pipeline from Iowa to Decatur right here through our area in Tazewell and Peoria County. So mm -hmm. controversial issue. Oh yeah. Absolutely. They are. So how many people do you think that you will be interviewing on how many people are you equipped to interview on your new set or do you know? Well I think we can interview four people at a time. Okay. Uh haven't gotten to that point yet. <laughs> we're we're working on another it. bug to be worked out. Yeah. But uh you know we're we're taking issues that affect people here in central Illinois. Uh, after we do the pipeline, we're going to be doing a story on a really cool task force locally that is targeting uh, potential child predators. Mm -hmm. We're going to be telling people about that. We're doing a, a two-part series on Peoria Public Schools report cards, which is very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're trying to pick topics that, that affect everyone. Yeah, well, there's a lot. Oh, yeah. There are a lot. And... Um, so people can get in touch with you and tell you their concerns and you can weigh that and whether or not it would be worth doing more research and, and conducting some interviews? Absolutely. We've got uh, the WTVP Facebook page that you can message. You can email me directly at mark.welp at wtvp.org. And yeah, we're, we're always up for ideas, you know, in the news business. I'm, I'm sure you've seen people call up the day after an event and say, well, why didn't you tell me about this? Right, exactly. Well, we didn't know about it. We don't know everything. That's right. We try to, but we don't. So. Well, <laughs> I remember back in the day, they, they sent me out on a story, and um, we got there, and I mean, there was nothing. Mm -hmm. there's, so, you know, I'm radioing them back, um, th there's nothing. And um, so then as I looked more closely at the uh, news release, it was the year before. 
Ah. Uh, so it got kind of tucked in, you know, sometimes that filing got a little bit wonky. Um, so out of all of your years in central Illinois, mm -hmm. What has been your most fun topic to, to cover? My most fun topic? Well, uh, I do remember when Gretchen Mortz and I were working together, we did a, a series called, our show was called Daybreak, and we did Daybreak Do My Job, where <laughs> we would go out and, and do different jobs. We worked fast food, we worked at TAPS, we worked at the zoo, and it was just fun. What was, was the just... worst one? What did you think you failed at? <laughs> Probably the zoo okay. because of the uh, we were cleaning up animal waste. Okay, that was not fun. A little stinky. <laughs> And yeah. probably in your good work clothes too, right? You didn't even have a chance to change. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did. They, they did let me change, oh, thankfully. <laughs> but those stories were always fun. Um, you know, even though I'm I'm doing hard news here and everything, I, I like to have fun and and do those lighter stories because, boy, especially after COVID, people want to hear good news. They do. I mean, they just they don't want to be beaten over the head with politics and taxes and death all the time. No, and and it is way, way too much. Sometimes you just have to turn it off. Um, so then what was the, what do you think was the worst thing you ever had to cover or most shocking to you that you had to try to figure out a way to deal with? Boy, that's a good question. You know, any, any time there's a murder, uh, that's always difficult. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes when you're in the studio reading these stories, you come, become a little desensitized, but once you're out on the street and you're seeing the victims and the victims' families, uh, it, it, gets, it gets to you. It tugs at you, yes. Yeah. Um, so now you worked all those years with Gretchen. Did yep. you know her mother and I went to high school together in Ohio? What? Yes, we graduated no. the same year. How crazy is that? Oh, she's uh, the best. What are the chances? So, um, <laughs> so tell me about when you kicked in the bathroom door. At, uh, <laughs> at Channel 25. <laughs> well, yeah, that was uh, after the merger, so Gretchen and I were still HOI, but we were in the 25 building, and it was before the morning show. She, uh, that place has so many bathrooms. I don't know why. I've never seen a place that has, the, the people to bathroom ratio is crazy. <laughs> but Gretchen pretty much used her own bathroom, and uh, the door was stuck. She couldn't get it open, and this was right before the show, and she called me on her cell phone, and, and I came over, and uh, I, I couldn't open it either, and I said, well, okay, got to kick it open. The show must go on. So I reared back, and I even did the, you know, fake police oh, okay. stance, you know. <laughs> okay. And I kicked the door open, and it busted off the hinges, and I can't say I didn't like it. <laughs> but it had to be so, done. So, and this is because, were her curlers in there and her makeup or something? Or? Oh, the whole shebang. Her, okay. <laughs> yeah, she's got a suitcase full of uh, items to make her look beautiful. So, yep, they were all in there, and I think it was about, 15 minutes before the show, so okay. it had to be done. You got, it you know what, done. you got to do what you got to do. That's right. You guys really did have a good rapport. Thanks. Um, yeah. And that's not something that comes easily. I mean, you can sit next to somebody and, you know, not stand to, to look, even look past them. Sure. But you guys really did. How did that develop? Uh, we just hit it off instantly. Um, I guess there was a little bit of luck involved, but we're... Uh, we have a lot of the same interests, a lot of the same uh, sense of humor, personality, but I've been really lucky between Gretchen and uh, and Kim and Shelby. I mean, we have all just, we get along on and off screen. None of it's fake. Right. I mean, we just genuinely all have liked each other, and I've been blessed that way. I, I almost think, you know, if, if I ever got back into TV news, I'd be hesitant because What's, what's, what are the odds you're going to get that fourth person who right. you really like and really gel with? Well, you have all these MMJs, these multimedia journalists, and yeah. um, did you find that it was starting to devolve into every man, every person for themselves? Because, I mean, back in the day, mm -hmm. it, it was a team. And if you were out, I mean, we didn't have cell phones or anything. We had... You know, we had a two-way radio, and somebody back at the station was working while you were out in the field and doing all that stuff. But we, it was a team effort to get that newscast or whatever that story was on the air. Yeah, with uh, the way it is, the, the whole business is now, not just here in Peoria, it's, it's nationwide. Mm -hmm. uh, these kids are coming out of college, and I don't think most of them are prepared for what they're getting into. And you know, but we started out young, and were we prepared? But it's a different thing because we didn't have satellite, boom, 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 boom on our phone mm -hmm. all the time to, 
to de detract from what we were supposed to be doing, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, we weren't busy taking selfies and trying to be social media <laughs> influencers. Right. Uh, I, I was terrible when I first started, and, I, and I'm so fortunate that the first station I worked at, everybody wanted me to be better, and they worked with me, and I eventually got better. Uh, but now it's kind of like the news cycle is so quick that... Because of satellite, because you get instant news, and it doesn't mean that it's always accurate. Right. What, that you're getting. It. Yeah. And you have so many newscasts, you got to fill that stuff. So it's almost like uh, quantity over quality now, unfortunately. Right. right. And well, and, and you were experiencing some of that, but now you're a one man band. <laughs> yeah, kind of, yeah. You're a one man newsroom. So, you know, do you think that you would ever be able to build your news organization here? If given uh, the tools, yeah, sure. Absolutely. I think we could do uh, just as good of a job as all the other stations. Uh, we just we don't have their resources. That's just a fact. Mm -hmm. But eventually it would be nice to have a third or fourth or fifth, whatever number we would be, uh, news organization in town. Right. And one of the things, since we have so much limited time now, is I don't cover fires or car accidents or things like that unless someone's passed away or it's a prominent building that's caught fire. Right. Uh, those things we just kind of put to the side, let the other people do them, and we focus on the things that kind of have a bigger effect on the and whole more audience. people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And isn't that how when you were producing newscasts back in the day, it's like, okay, what's the lead story here? The lead story is how many people does this impact? Mm -hmm. Does does it matter? Does that one little thing matter, you know, because it's a headline or, and you know, and that's I think how it should be, but you yeah. know, I mean, that's how I was trained, and that was last century, a long time ago. Well, I, yeah, those that's all right though, because those things should still be here. You know, the way you look at news and how you determine whether or not it's newsworthy. Mm -hmm. But again, now that you have all the TV shows and the internet, mm -hmm. you got to fill up those web pages with stories, stuff, stuff. Yeah, whether it's real news or not. Right, right. So, what do you think your biggest challenge will be with this new gig year you're going to I mean because anything can change you might be prepared you might have a show ready to go and then whoop, everything flips yeah that'll be a challenge um, that's why you kind of when you're producing the shows have to make it a little more general and not as specific maybe on a specific time or issue like with this pipeline story this is going to be going on forever mm -hmm. I mean for at least the next year until the Illinois Commerce Commission makes its decision, makes its decision next year. So yeah. we're just going to have to talk about what has led us up to this point, and then at some point we're going to revisit it in the future. Mm -hmm. But again, I think just, uh, yeah, resources always help, and right now, you know, I've, I'm wearing a lot of hats. You are, definitely. So not only are you um, doing at issue, and Mark's very friends, but you're also contributing to um, the Peoria Magazine, I believe, right? A little bit. Okay. Yeah, not not as much now. I scaled back a little bit on that because something had to give. Okay. And I'm not a magazine writer. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, not when you're cutting things down to 60 seconds. Right. Um, but you also um, have the ability to um, to be a contributor to You Got to See This. Which I love. Okay. That's been a lot of fun so far. Okay. So uh, do you contribute ideas? I mean, working with those two is pretty crazy. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, Phil Luciano and Julie Sanders. And, well, we should say that you got to see this is going to be moving from its current time. To Thursdays. To Thursdays right after Ad Issue. Mm -hmm. So that's neat. And if you haven't watched you got to see this, you, you've got to see it because right. it's, it's fun. You know, we talk about the fun things and the interesting people that are happening in central Illinois. And right. I've done probably half a dozen stories so far, and, and it's been a lot of fun. It's it's nice to be creative and not be limited to a minute and a half story. Well, and that's just it, because then you have, you know, you have five or six minutes that you can yep. dedicate to it. What's been the most fun of those that you've done? I think I did a story on muffler men, which are, if you're not familiar with the term, they're those big fiberglass statues that you see um, around. There's one in Atlanta, there's one in Normal at Carl's Ice Cream. They used to be all along Route 66. Okay. And uh, we still have a bunch here in central Illinois, so I kind of went into the history of those and what they mean and why people use them. They're basically advertisements. But right. 
it was something that I would drive by these every day for 10 years. And thinking, wonder. Someday, I want to do a story on these. Right. And now I had the chance, and I had a long time to, to explain it, and it was a lot of fun. It, yeah, it is fun. And people, you know, general audience, they don't, they don't necessarily understand, it's not their fault, that, you know, you can be at a story all day long, mm -hmm. you know, in, in a courtroom or whatever, and you have to come back and you have to write it, you know, for 45 seconds or a minute, and that's really difficult to capture what went sure. on. So this gives you an opportunity that way, and then at issue, will you really get to dig in? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it, and uh, I, I'm interested in the interview process because I've done a thousand interviews in my 25 years of doing this. But if I do a live interview on the morning show, it's two and a half, three minutes, right? And it's about the quilt of the month club. Right. You know, whatever. Uh, but th these are topics, you know, I can pick and I can research them and, yeah, really sink my teeth into them and instead of just scratching the surface. Mm -hmm. Will you be the one who, uh, you're producing, um, yeah. but you'll be the one to also come up with uh, what the video is going to entail yeah. as well? Yeah, I'll be doing that. Yeah, the video, I'll be writing the graphics. Uh, we're going to, you know, sometimes in interviews talk about a lot of numbers. We're mm -hmm. going to put those numbers up on the screen so people can actually follow along and, right. and hopefully understand things better. And also, uh, Phil Luciano from You Gotta See This is going to be joining me almost every week, I think, to kind of put his perspective on things. And, and he'll be, for instance, um, when we talk about the CO2 pipeline, mm -hmm. I'm going to be... I'm going to be doing the interview with uh, someone who's concerned about the pipeline. Phil actually went out to a gentleman's home in South Pekin and talked to him. So we're because it would be going right underneath his yard, wouldn't it? Pretty or? much, yeah. Okay. Pretty much, yeah. So Phil's going to be contributing, and, and he and I are going to get a chance to chat at the end of the shows and hopefully have a little fun too. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and he has explored a lot of really wacky topics in yeah. all of his years doing everything. Yeah. So what what a great opportunity. So. You know, you've worked with a lot of great people and you're still yep. doing it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this next adventure and things are changing day by day and I'm learning more day by day. And and luckily, uh, as with all my other stations, I'm enjoying the people I'm working with, which is so important. It really, truly is. And then, um, so you have your wife and your daughter and she's nine years old. Yes. And you figured out she's in third grade. Something like that. <laughs> Close. Well, that's Third, good. Fourth. And they're very proud of you, um, I'm sure. Hopefully. Have they been over here yet? Because you've been here how many months? I've been here since February. Okay. Yeah. February, Six, March, seven April, May. <laughs> <laughs> we have enough they, fingers to figure that yeah, out. Yeah, they have been over here. They're very impressed that I have an office. This is the first time I've had an office. Right, rather you know. than just being in a general newsroom. Yeah, rather than being in the cubicle. Yeah. So they're impressed by that. But uh, yeah, they got to meet uh, everybody over here and check out our spacious studio here. Yeah, Biggest right. in the state outside of Chicago. That's right. Yeah. That's right, and it is very impressive. I had some uh, people who um, work on Sesame Street here, and sh they were very impressed with our studio. Um, so, you know, let, let's sell that too. Hey, we, we can do it here. That's right. <laughs> you can have your, your meetings, your family reunions, your, well, I don't know about meetings, <laughs> but... Okay, so I think we've talked about bucket list, but specifically your personal life bucket list. What do you have? Are you going to get more vacation time or? Yeah, I've got more vacation time, but at this point I don't know how I'm going to use it. Okay. <laughs> or when. Right. Uh, so I've got to figure that out. But, yeah, you know, my, I never, um, when I got into this business, I just wanted to enjoy it and do a good job. I didn't have any aspirations of going to New York or Chicago or mm -hmm. making X amount of money. I just wanted to be able to support myself and have fun doing it. And now um, I can really support myself and have fun doing it. And now I can just focus on being creative and, and trying to put the best product out there, which is why this is a great place to work. Really, truly is. Well, you know what? You uh, you landed in the right spot, and you got a lot of good ideas. What is your advice for anybody out there who um, might want to, at some point, follow in your footsteps? Oh, boy. Uh, get internships. Very important. And get an internship where you're not just fetching coffee. <laughs> uh, those are important. Uh, watch the competition. So many kids today just are focused on what they're doing and not looking at what everybody else is doing. It's good to know what the competition's doing. Um, nothing's going to be handed to you. You want something? You got to work for it. Go out and do it. All go right. Go out and grab it.
Gosh, thanks so much, Mark. Thank Good to you. finally talk to you like a I long know. time. Yeah, I know. It was great. great. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for joining us. Um, you know a lot about this guy now. Don't forget, he's an AI guy at issue. Be well. <laughs>